As the topic of today is about dragons, I've decided to write it up in my special notebook. <laughs> Just for fun. Most of us at one time or another need to deal with the issue of loneliness. I found it especially intense just after my divorce. And since then I've made a lot of headway on loneliness and being able to transform it into a sense of peace of mind and contentment. And I certainly don't claim to be all the way there, but I've made a lot of progress. And I'd like to share with you some of the methods and understandings that I've come to on this in case it helps you as well. And of course, you're very welcome at any point to chime in with your experience because that might help other people too. Let's get into it. Something that can really help us with dealing with loneliness and facing the, the dragon of loneliness is the story of the Hobbit. Because in the Hobbit, you know, the main character, Bilbo Baggins, has to face a dragon. And there's two main things that he needs to do as he's learning to face that dragon. And that is, he needs to become invisible. As you know in the story, he has a ring and the ring helps him to become invisible. It gives him a real advantage in dealing with a dragon. So he's able to interact with the dragon, but be invisible to the dragon. He's to be able to interact with the dragon, but yet not be at the mercy of the dragon. <laughs> And that, and, and so there's a way we can do that. There's a way we can interact with the dragon of loneliness without being affected by it, without being stung by the painful aspects of loneliness. And that is by being able to observe what's going on inside us without reacting to it, to be able to become the detached observer. And that can take a bit of time and a bit of practice. But there's ways that you can make it much easier and to be able to achieve that. And one, is, one way is to become aware of the thoughts that are going on inside your mind about how you feel right now. And there may be thoughts like, I'm alone again, I'll always be lonely, I'll probably die alone, nobody likes me. You know, goodness knows what will actually come up. But the thing is just simply write those thoughts down, calmly write the thought down, and then write down the next thought, and then the next thought. And just keep writing down the thoughts as they come. And what happens is you begin to cultivate this capacity to be the observer, to actually note and notice what your experience is from this part of you or what this part of you is experiencing, but not be affected by it. And that's a real gift because it's one of the primary things that helps take the sting out of being lonely and turns it into a more peaceful, contented sense of aloneness and a capacity to, to actually treasure the time of when you feel solitary. There's times it's really important to be solitary and to take space out from other people so you can do that. And if every time we're alone we get this waves of loneliness, then it gets in the way of that, that essential solitary process that's important to be able to be creative. In order to be creative, usually we need to have a solitary time. And if we're afraid or resistant to being alone, because of waves of lonely feelings, then it's blocking our deeper capacities to create and to contribute to life in a deeper way. Now, another aspect uh, of the story of, of, of The Hobbit is the character Bilbo also has to become a thief, or at least is labelled as a, a thief. And, um, and Jordan Peterson addresses that issue in one of his videos. And um, I would like to explore it from a few other angles in that because often when you're dealing with the issue of loneliness, we may need to face, in fact, we usually do need to face, and risk becoming aspects of ourselves that we'd much rather not do. <laughs> However, they give us an incredible gift. For example, when I was dealing with my divorce and I was going through all sorts of unhappy, sad feelings and all sorts of unhappy, angry feelings, also, what I experienced was a lot of self-pity, and I don't want to experience self-pity. I avoid self-pity. I, I tended to be, you know, judgmental of people who were wrapped in self-pity. So um, that was something I was not comfortable with. So in the story of The Hobbit, Bilbo has to become a thief, which is something he's not comfortable with. He's, he, he wouldn't be comfortable with. He's a was an upright citizen within his culture, within his race. So he wouldn't be happy with the idea of becoming a thief. And like I wasn't happy with the idea of 
risking becoming self-pitying and allowing that within myself. But I got incredible gifts out of it. And what the gift I got was a better capacity to empathize and connect with the feelings of other people. And that's really helpful for an MD that wants to do writing or any kind of music or any kind of creativity. So not only did it help me with the capacity to be empathic and sympathetic and compassionate for others in a visceral way, it also helped me be much more creative. <laughs> and this is to do with the gold that the dragon hoards. That when we accept the, the challenges of the dragon, we also get the gifts of the golden hoard that it's keeping for us, the precious jewels, the you know, symbolizing the creative, the creative abilities and the capacities that the dragon is holding for us. And once we face the dragon, we get these. And it's really interesting to me in the story that Bilbo in a way becomes a thief, but he absolutely completely transcends stealing because what he does is the very thing, this precious Arkenstein that he's, he's got hold of, he then, he gives it away to Gandalf in order to prevent a war, in order to, defend, in order to prevent a battle and the possibility of his friends and other people he, he cares about being killed. And the interesting thing was that none of them were of his race. They were all of a different race from him. So isn't that interesting that he was cast as a, a, half, a halfling, a, a half man, you might say, in a way, and a kind of lowly kind of race, and, but is willing to give away the precious thing that many would have coveted, that many would have killed him and other, many others in order to get, and he was willing to give it away to prevent people being killed. He risked becoming a thief by going into that part of himself, but he transcended it by giving, becoming some incredibly positive and giving and being able to offer that stone to the service of a purpose higher and greater than himself. So he nobled his character by becoming a thief or being willing to risk getting stuck and just be, being a thief. So he transcended it. And that's one of the key one of the keys of working with dragon energy is to be able to relate to it but not get pulled into, you know, don't get totally pulled into it. So by being the observer, being objective and being bigger than what's going on, you can transform it. And that's the key to handling dragon energy, it's to transform it. And many stories sort of as a shortcut and, and many fairy stories also, the, the author often has the hero or heroes kill the dragon. However, can't actually kill a dragon. And many men make that mistake in their life. When, they're, for example, they're dealing with women and relationships with women. They try and become a nice guy that they think this woman's going to like. And with that, they're killing, they're trying to kill off, metaphorically, the wild part of themselves, the, the fiery part of themselves. And so they're daily, moment by moment, even trying to kill off the dragon. And, um, and it never works because somebody dragging around a dead dragon is not sexy. There's no, there's no fire in the belly of somebody who's doing it, or not much. It's largely quiescent. The woman senses there's something missing here. <laughs> but she might be willing to put up with it. She might be willing to go along with it for various reasons. But whatever, whatever. It's not good for a man to be trying to kill his dragon. What we need to do is to transform the dragon. And we do that by facing the dragon, where it takes the form of loneliness or the fear of loneliness or trying to avoid loneliness. And that, after all, is why many people get into a relationship. It's a fear of loneliness. They can't stand being on their own. But this other, this thing that seems such a, such a threat, carries incredible gifts. Because as you know in the stories, the dragons have hordes that have a, virtually always have a hoard of gold or something precious to offer. And the same in the, the Hobbit story, that the dragon has this hoard of precious things. And that's a great analogy because when we face a dragon, we get the gifts, we get access to this hoard that the dragon has been containing. And who knows what that will be for you? Or it could be a gift of writing or creativity or music, or art, or an appreciation of beauty, 
or whatever. It could be many different things. But it's probably something you really will find incredibly precious that will be full of meaning for you. As you, whenever you face a dragon, that's what you get and makes life much more fulfilling and much more enriched. Like everybody else, I'm a work in progress. And so I don't claim to have completely nailed and, and, uh, and sorted out the whole issue of loneliness, but I've come a long way. And because um, as I was going through my divorce, I've really faced an intense sense of loneliness. And what I discovered is that, as I say, learning to detach from and become an observer of the, the lonely aspect of myself and being able to write down what it was saying, what it was trying to communicate, I was able to, to resolve those. So in essence, what we do is when we face this dragon of, of, of loneliness, we're really looking to transform it, to become an observer to, so that we can observe what thoughts and feelings are going on and simply to begin with just writing them down in a detached way and not doing anything about them and it takes the sting out of it it takes the sting energy out of the out of those thoughts so they become conscious we make them conscious we gain a power over them and then we begin to discover other capacities within ourselves that were inside and that which we hadn't explored before because we were too busy doing this and doing that and keeping ourselves busy so we can avoid loneliness. But then we discover that there's a higher, wiser, better part of ourselves within. And that when we stop and take time to explore what's within, we discover that part. And it takes away a lot of the edge of what becomes loneliness. Because loneliness is really... The, a stream of negative thoughts that we have about ourselves or we have about other people or we have about life and it's the negative unhappy thoughts that are painful and so as we learn to unravel and, and make conscious those thoughts a lot of the pain goes away and not only does the pain go away peace of mind and contentment begin to replace it so we become more at ease with ourselves and we become a better version of ourselves at the same time. And we become a better version of ourselves that comes from inside of us, that comes from the unexpressed uh, and undeveloped potential or previously undeveloped potential that we've got inside. And if we're just busy working, 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 gaining stuff and getting stuff and getting stuff. We're not tapping into our potential. We're not beginning to know the wiser, deeper part of ourselves that is guiding us to become a more full, more complete person. So often the, the, what appears as dragons in our life is the other. It's the other parts of ourselves embodied through a figure of a dragon or a dragonish human being or a challenging person. And if we look at what this calls forth from within us and learn to observe it, we can use those experiences as a way to grow, a way to mature and to become more of ourselves and to enrich ourselves on the inside. And so it's really important to take the time to do that. And so in a sense, what looks like this dragon of loneliness is really offering us gifts. It's offering the, the gift of discovering a deeper, wiser, more peaceful, more serene, more contented part of ourselves and so that's what I hope for you I hope that there's something within this video that helps you discover that part of yourself this deeper wiser part of yourself that can lead you to more contentment more peace of mind and a happier life so be you be yourself be your best self you're awesome go for it